How's it going everyone? Today you can see that I have got the snow plow mounts all put onto the truck. Uh, although it is raining today, uh, the snow is on the way within the next month. So I have everything all set up just in case it does come early. Actually it's late already, but anyway. What I want to do today is we're going to be installing a 3 inch leveling kit. That's 3 inches in the front, 2 inches in the back. So really, I guess total you get 2 inches of height and then you also get 3 inches in the front and sorry an extra inch in the front to give you that leveling portion and that's really important for me uh, with the snow plow. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're going to start on the rear of the truck. The rear kit comes with your blocks, your U-bolts, and of course your nuts and your washers. So obviously the first thing we're going to want to do is jack up the truck, put some jack stands underneath, and begin taking off the tires. Next take off the four bolts that are holding your U-joints to the axle. Once you've done that you can take out your U-bolts and then jack up your leaf springs, providing a space between the axle and the leaf springs. Take out your old block and then insert your new one. Ensure that the rear block is inserted with the skinnier end facing the front of the truck. Then begin to slowly lower your leaf springs, ensuring that the hole on the top of the block is lined up with the leaf springs and the hole on the bottom is lining up with the axle. Next get your new U-bolts, put them on top, and grab the, the old bracket that you used before to bolt them back on. And now that we're done with the rear blocks, you can start on the front. Obviously guys, the first thing we're going to want to do is take off the front tire. Then using a 15 millimeter wrench, we want to unbolt the nut from the sway bar end link and take out the sway bar end link. Then unbolt the single 13 millimeter bolt holding the brake line bracket to the coil housing. Unbolt the brackets from the ABS line using a 10 millimeter socket. Support the lower control arm with a floor jack. Using a 21mm socket, unbolt the nut holding the tie rod to the knuckle. Using an 18mm socket, loosen the nut holding the upper ball joint to the knuckle. Then using a hammer, begin to strike the knuckle, breaking it loose. Then using an 18mm wrench, unbolt the three nuts holding the strut assembly to the frame housing. Next, using a 15mm socket, unbolt the two bolts holding the strut to the lower control arm. The head of the bolts can be found underneath the strut. So now we're going to want to slowly bring down the jack from the lower control arm. This way we're going to be able to remove the strut from the vehicle. I personally choose not to fully remove the strut. I find it easier to grab my spacer and install it while the strut is still in place. This way I'm not trying to fidget to get it out. 
keep in mind that the spacer only fits one way. Once the spacer is installed, you're going to want to turn the full strut assembly 180 degrees. That way the holes line up with the top of the frame and it lines up with the bottom uh, where the strut bolts on to the lower control arm. Next is align the three strut bolts back up with the holes onto the mounting bracket on the frame. This will take a little bit of time to fidget around to get it in properly. Once in, you want to put your floor jack back underneath your lower control arm. Placing the strut on top of the lower control arm, you then want to jack it up in a manner that you are then able to get the bolts in on the two holes on the lower control arm. This may take some time and I recommend using things like a crowbar to maneuver the lower control arm or sorry the strut uh, in such a way that you're able to get those bolts in. This may take some time so try to be patient and keep your balance. <laughs> Once you line up the two bolts on the bottom, you can tighten them up and then tighten up the three on top of the strut assembly. Once you're done this, your spacer has been put in. All you need to do now is reverse the entire process that we just went through, put everything back together and ensure that all your bolts are tight. I recommend going for a quick little test drive once everything's done to ensure that all the bolts have been put on properly and that you're not getting any squeaking or rubbing or anything that you shouldn't be having. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Overall, the whole project went really well. I enjoyed the look of it. It gave us a lot of extra space now, and uh, I would definitely recommend it. To buy this product, link's in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.